I wonder today how many of you struggle with fear. You know, a man and his wife were out on drive on a gorgeous Sunday, uh, Saturday afternoon. When they came to one of the railroad crossings in town, the, start, the lights started flashing, the arms came down, and realizing a train was, was traveling down the tracks, the man stopped the car about 50 yards away from the cro train crossing. The wife asked him why he was, what he was doing stopping so far away. And his answer was, well, I was afraid the train might derail and tip over and hit him. You know, so many of us struggle with fear. My guess is that many of you do too. What are some of the fears that you have? Anybody want to share any of that with the church? I didn't think so. But there are many phobias that people have. Uh, some are afraid of heights. Some are afraid of water. Some have an intense fear of snakes or spiders. The list is endless. And, 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 and so the question that is, it comes up is, what do you fear? Whether it be something that you have a deep-seated phobia about, or whether it's just something that's temporary from time to time to time, we all have fear. What is it that you fear? Our text today teaches us that solution to fear is the presence of God. Here's our main point. The Lord will never, the Lord will never leave those who belong to Him. We could also say it like this. Because God is here, you should have no fear. Our text today is Isaiah 41, verse 10. If you're not already there, turn to, turn to it. And let's read it together. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This verse gives us two commands that we are to obey. First of all, he says, do not fear. Secondly, he says, do not be dismayed. Now, if you go back to the, to the original Hebrew, you know what this word really means in Hebrew? It means do not fear. Do not fear. Do not be. These are two commands that God has given us to obey. He gives us two reasons why to obey these commands. He says, for I am with you and I am your God. And we also see three promises that God will keep that will enable us not to fear. He said, I will strengthen you. I will help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So he tells us what not to do. Don't be fearful and don't be anxious. And then he tells us why. Because he is our God and he is with us. And then he tells us three things that he will do. He will strengthen us, help us, and uphold us. Now you've got to keep in mind the context in which Isaiah was writing when he wrote these words. He, the context here is that he, God is promising to bring his people back from captivity. But the crazy thing about it, the, this particular passage is that Isaiah was writing about something that was going to happen 180 years in the future from the time of his writing. Even before people, God's people had sinned. Even before they were judged. Even before they were sent into Babylon in captivity for 70 years. God is telling them that they, that they will return and he will bless them once again. What a gracious God we serve. But Isaiah has often been, the book of Isaiah has been referred to as the Bible in miniature. It has 66 chapters, just like the Bible has 66 books. The first 39 chapters correspond with the Old Testament as they speak of judgment. The final 27 echo the New Testament emphasis on grace and comfort and restoration. These chapters were written to afflicted people who were filled with great fear. And he tells them, do not fear. Check out the tone of the, in this entire section as 
found in, first of all, in Isaiah 40, verses 1 and 2. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem. Call out to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed. Look at Isaiah 43 in verses 1, 2, and 3, which happens to be my favorite verse of all the Scripture. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. God still speaks tenderly to everybody that's going through trials. And He offers, offers comfort to the discouraged and the dismayed and the hurting and the helpless. God promises His presence in order to free us from the bondage of fear. Fear in our families, in our jobs or lack of jobs, in the middle of our marriage messes, with our school stresses, with our health situation, with our friendships, with our finances, problems from the past, worries about the future, or in any other situation. Look, we've got a lot to be fearful of in this world that we're going in. This world is becoming more and more evil. This world is turning more and more hostile toward Christianity and toward God and the things of God. But he tells us over and over and over again, do not fear. The word fear comes from the, from the word phobos, which initially had the meaning of flight or fleeing. So, but instead of fleeing from our fears, Isaiah 41.10 gives us a five-part formula to help us face our fears. Do these five things and you'll be able to overcome the fear that we're facing. First of all, I will live without fear because God is with me. Notice it doesn't say God was with me or that God will be with me. It says, He is with me. That can be translated as saying, there's nothing for you to fear because I am with you. It's been said that the phrase, fear not, or do not be afraid, is found in the Bible 365 different times. If that's one for every day of the year. Over and over and over, He's telling us that we can live without fear because God is with us. And that's the first thing we need to face. Uh, to, in order to face your fears, that's the first thing we need to remember, is that God is with us. Moses needed this reminder. In Exodus thirty three fourteen, God says, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. David needed this reminder, and he wrote about it in the 23rd Psalm. He said, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And after giving the Great Commission, which involved going and making disciples and teaching and baptizing, Jesus promised His presence in Matthew 28, 20. He said, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. When you're filled with fear, remember this truth and declare it out loud. I will have no fear because He is here. The problem for most of us is that we're not aware of His presence in our, in our life as we stumble through life oblivious to the fact that He is with us and will never leave those who belong to, us, to Him. If you're filled with fear today, it may be because you're acting like Jesus is not here. If that be true, Declare this first truth. I will live without fear because God is with me. Now let's look at the second part of overcoming fear. I will not be dismayed because He is my God. To be dismayed means to be broken and to be filled with fear. It literally means to look around anxiously as one does in a state of alarm. Do not be dismayed. Do not be anxious. 
Would you notice that the key to not being anxious is to make sure that He is your God. I will not be dismayed because He is my God. 1 Samuel 30 verse 6 says that David was distressed because the men were talking about stoning him. But that changed when he found strength in the, in the Lord his God. Is he your God? Is he your God? I will not be dismayed. I will not be anxious because he is my God. This promise becomes activated when you personalize your relationship with Him by trusting Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. Can you say, He is my God today? I'm convinced that if each one of us could see God as big and as grand as He really is, most of our fears would just melt away. Because when we fear God, we don't fear other things. When we revere God, we don't, we don't fear other things. When we realize that God is bigger than everything else, there is nothing to fear. So to expand your, your view of Almighty God, let me ask you this week to read Isaiah 40 and 41 several times this week. Here's a sampling from Isaiah 40. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power. His arm rules for him. Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket, and they are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. I will live without fear because God is with me. I will not be dismayed because he is my God. When those two promises have been claimed by you, you will have the confidence to make the next proclamation. I will lean on God to strengthen me. I love what Corey Ten Boom once said. In times of fear, I don't wrestle. I nestle. In times of fear, I don't wrestle. I nestle. Psalms 29 verse 11 says, The Lord gives strength to His people. The Lord blesses His people with peace. And He does. He strengthens us. He gives us peace. That's what comes when we, when we know that we belong to Him and He belongs to us. I find great comfort in Isaiah 42 verse 3. This passage is quoted in Matthew 12, 20 when referring to Jesus. It says, A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. Jesus does not break us when we're broken, nor does he smash us when we're smoldering. I will lean on God to strengthen me. Next, we can claim the promise, I will trust God to help me. That proclamation, I will trust God to help me. Because he's always present, he promises his strength, and he promises to help us. After, being, after reminding us that the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us, the writer of Hebrews says in 13.6, So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? You ever noticed God will never unfriend you? Now, I've got to be honest with you. I don't do Facebook, so I don't really know in full reality what that means to be unfriended. I think it means I didn't like what you posted. I'm not going to have anything else to do with you, so I'm scratching you off my contact list. God never will do that. He will never unfriend you, especially if you do something stupid or when you sin or when we're just stressed out. And the reason why is he said because he said, I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. 
I will uphold you. God will never, ever unfriend me. So because I live without fear, because God is with me, I will not be dismayed because he is my God. I can lean on God to strengthen me. I can trust God to help me. And thirdly, I can believe that God will uphold me with his righteous right hand. The word uphold means to hold up, to grasp, to support. The idea is similar to one to, to the word undergird, which means to make secure underneath. In my way of thinking, every time I hear that he will uphold me with his righteous right hand, I think of a loving father holding an infant child. That child has got no strength on his own. That child has got no means of supporting himself physically. But he has no fear because he's nestled in the arms of his father who is holding him and supporting him from underneath. We are upheld by God's righteous right hand. This is his hand of promise. You ever feel like you failed? Now don't sit there and look past. Do you ever feel like you failed? Do you ever feel like you've fallen down? Do you ever wonder why you fall so many times? Hold on to the truth that He upholds you when you feel like you're barely holding on. Psalm 145, verses 13 and 14 says, The Lord is faithful to all His promises and loving toward all He has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The Lord helps us and He holds us when we're shaking like a leaf. The Lord will never leave those who belong to him because God is here with us we should have no fear God upholds the hurting God also reveals his presence through his people who reach out with his love God will never fail us So how do you fear today? You afraid? Well, I'm on level with you. If you are not in Christ, if you have not been made righteous, you have every reason to be afraid. If you don't, if your salvation is not secure in Jesus Christ, you better be afraid. But for all who know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, there's no reason to be, be fearful. In the Old Testament, God's presence was demonstrated in the tabernacle. That's where the people would go to meet with God. When Jesus came, John 1.14 says that he tabernacled among us. When he said the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He was sent from the presence of the Father, and He is the presence of the Father. And He takes us into the presence of the Father when we put our faith in Him for the forgiveness of sin. If you have not yet been born again, then this is the decision that you need to make today. Profess Him as your Lord and Savior then the promise of His presence will be fulfilled in your life. So what have, what have I been telling you for the last few minutes? I've been telling you to fear not, for God is with you. Fear not, He is your God. Fear not, He will strengthen you. Fear not, He will help you. And fear not, He will uphold you. He is with you. He is your God. He will strengthen you, help you, and uphold you. I like how John Piper restates these promises using five different prepositions. He says, I am your God over you. I am with you by your side. I will strengthen you from inside you. I will help you all around you 
I will uphold you from underneath you. That's exactly what God will do. He's promised over and over and over again. We have no reason to fear. We have no reason to be anxious. God is over you, by you, inside you, around you, and underneath you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Even when you think a train's about to tip over on you. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we simply want to say to you how much we do love you. And Father, how grateful we are that we know you are with us. Never, there's nowhere we can go. You're not already there. We know that you are with us. And you have promised us over and over and over again that you are with us, you are for us, you strengthen us, you help us, you uphold us. So forgive us when we doubt. Forgive us when we are fearful. Forgive us when we worry and anxiously look about us. Instead, like a newborn baby, let us just be peaceful, restful, knowing we are secure in your arms. Lord, this world is a scary place. And those who don't know you have reason to fear. But you have told us, do not fear. For you have called us by name. We are yours. And you are our Savior, the Holy One of Israel. So, Lord, we simply pray, knowing we're safely and securely in your arms, have your way in every way. Forgive us, strengthen us, and love us. What a perfect God you are. And we give to you all praise and glory. For this, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior.